Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you a Sorcerer Wizard build guide for in Baldur's Gate 3. Now there's some interesting synergy between these two classes. I don't see a whole lot of people talking about the combination of Sorcerer and Wizard, so I want to take that upon myself here. I've tested this out for a while. So with our class start, we want to go with the Sorcerer because you're going to get proficiency in Constitution saving throws, which is pretty important to have, so that is a huge focus of this. If you start with the wizard, you'd get intelligence saving uh, proficiency in intelligence saving throws, but I think that it is better to go with the sorcerer. Plus, we also get a better start than the wizard, in my opinion. So, we're going to take for cantrips, shocking grasp, and fray of frost. We can cast water and then use these for great amounts of damage early on in the game. If you're the face of the party, you have to take friends. This is an essential cantrip, in my opinion. But if not, you can take something like minor illusion. And also Firebolt's nice to have fire uh, just for casting, um, but uh, Minor Illusion is a great spell. If you got Thieves, you can steal and also group enemies together for some larger attacks like a Chromatic Orb and Magic Missile, which is what we're going to take here. Shield can also be something you can go with, so like Shield and Magic Missile. Um, for our subclass, however, there's two really good options, <clears throat> two great options here. So Storm Sorcerer is nice because uh, we get the ability to fly really early on in the game, which can be extremely useful for positioning, and you don't get hit with opportunity attacks. So this can help with survivability, but the Draconic Bloodline is very powerful as well. There's two that really stand out. I really like the blue one. Uh, Witch Bolt is not the best spell, but you're going to increase lightning damage later on in the game, so that's very effective. And I also think that the White Dragon with the Armor of Agathus is pretty great as well. And I think that for this build, we're going to go with that as the theme I got going on with the hair. I think that cold damage is very underrated. So, White Dragon. There's also the Silver if you want Feather Fall, but I do prefer the Armor of Agathus. If you want Lightning, go with either of the Blue um, or Bronze here. Fog Cloud can be pretty useful for utility, but uh, you can do whatever color scales you want or just turn it off. And for our ability scores, this is where it gets kind of interesting because depending on where we're at in the game, we're going to move this around a bit. So we actually have to have high intelligence in this build, which makes things a little bit trickier. But uh, one of the nice things is we can go with we can go with our Charisma 16 and Constitution 16. And then once we get to the Gith Yankee Crush in Act 1, we're going to be able to dump our Dexterity and give the Dexterity Gloves to our Sorcerer Wizard. So... That allows us to pump up our intelligence a little bit more. Still not perfect, but if you're also in Act 1, you can completely dump your intelligence and use the circlet of intelligence early on in the game to keep your wizard level high. But uh, we can go with something like that. That at least gives us a nice plus 2 to intelligence check early on, and then later on we can also up any of these stats. Later on in the game as well, once you get the Amulet of Constitution, since this is a squishy class, it's recommended that you give your Constitution Amulet to them. So later on in the game, you can actually go full in on the Wizard and the uh, Charisma together and then have a little bit of your points in Wisdom or Strength if you're being able to use the potions. Or if you're able to use the Gloves of Dexterity and the Constitution Amulet. If not, go back to the stats that I've put there, but for this build, we're just going to go with these here so we can maximize our intelligence. Now, as we level up, we're going to be going over gear at the end here because it is important to this build because there's some very great gear, especially in Act 3, but also in Act 1 that works wonders for this build. For our next level spell, Ice Knife is kind of a no-brainer as we're going for a cold build. This does air of effect damage and can do cold damage, so if we have a... If you have someone on your team that can create water, that makes it very useful. So for our meta magics, Distance Spell increases the range by 50%, can be useful early on. And Twin Spell, one of the most broken things in the game once we get to level 3 spells, because we can Twin Haste. So we're going to go with those two options, because Twin Haste can be very powerful. You give yourself haste, so you get another action, so that free action cave haste to another person on your team. So if you have a fighter, they get another action. It's pretty broken. And for our next level, we're going to take a uh, whole person is a very great, if you got a lot of merch, like fighters or close range combatants, you can use this to get critical hits on any attack within three meters. So that's very effective, but also cloud of daggers can be a good early game damage dealer. And scorching ray, one of these three. Misty step is nice for utility too, but I'm going to go with hold person. And then we're going to go with quicken spell, which spells that cost an action, cost a bonus action instead allowing us to cast two spells in one go. This gets pretty powerful. So 
As we get into level 4, we get our first feat and a cantrip, which we're going to go with something like Mage Hand or Bone Chill. Uh, this will prevent healing, but Mage Hand is great as well for just being able to throw water bottles to set up lightning and cold damage. And for our next level cantrip, either Scorching Ray or Cloud of Daggers. Um, and then finally, we get a feat, and what we're going to go with here is a boost to either Intelligence or Charisma. We're going to mostly be using Charisma, so take the Charisma up as high as you can get it. Uh, e even numbers are best, but we're going to imagine you take Hag's Hair to put the Charisma up to 20. I also have a piece of gear that gives us an extra plus 2 to Charisma, and then also in Act 3 you can get another plus 2 to your Charisma, so it gets pretty good later on. We're going to take Haste, this is just no brainer. Haste, Lightning Bolt, and Counterspell are kind of like the big three here, which is funny because Fireball is like the fan favorite spell. Um, but I do think that haste brings a lot more power to the team. Lightning Bolt, because we're looking to set up water to do double damage with cold and lightning. And counter spell is just great to have. So first spell, we're going to go with haste. And we get another sorcerer point there, which is super useful. For the next level spell, counter spell is kind of great. Because you can shut down other mages and uh, it stops the spell from being cast. Preventing damage is huge in Baldur's Gate 3. It uses a reaction, but it's a very good reaction. Fireball can be pretty decent too. Like if you see an enemy casting Fireball and your whole team's together, use Counterspell. It'll just save your life. Um, level 4 spells are decent. Uh, Ice Storm being kind of the big one that I want to take because this is all about dealing cold damage with water. So this one gives us a nice 46 cold damage and then also bludgeoning damage. So upwards of 40 damage. And that can double. The cold damage will double on that one. Fireball or Lightning are kind of the next choice to go with. Like, our level four spell slots will be primarily reserved for other things, and you'll see later on the bit in the video. But uh, Lightning Bolt can be pretty nice uh, dealing with the water that we're going to be setting up. And then for our next ability, we get ability improvement. We can also go with Dual Wielder, and there's two really great spells late in Act Three that allow you to cast an additional level six spell. So having those two dual wielded plus the one to your armor class with those is really good but uh, there's some other options that we can go with if you want medium armor you can go with that if you have your dexterity pretty high I'm using light armor and then I have boots and a cloak that give increased armor class so that's how I'm mitigating damage but another option is to go with medium armor and use like armor of agility plus the dexterity gauntlets which is pretty great together to put your armor class up to like 23 or 24 also, Warcaster can maintain co maintain concentration on like hold person can be pretty great, but um, spell sniper is not bad as well. It gives you increased chance hit criticals with some spells and cantrips. But I do think that ability ability improvement and uh, going up in intelligence is pretty useful, and you're going to see why because the wizard that we're adding in does get its spells to scale off of that. So we're going to take for our level five spell, which is pretty exciting. Cone of Cold. So this is just pure cold damage, which is much better than you'd imagine because there's a lot of gear that sets up cold damage and water will make this do upwards of 128 damage. So Cone of Cold, underrated spell. Not enough people talk about it. I missed it earlier, but in earlier levels we got increased damage to our cold damage from the uh, Dragon Bloodline. So that's really nice as well. Bone Chill's a nice one to take, but if you haven't taken any friends is Friends, if you're the face of the party, is just makes sense. So level 10 is where we can start to... We can go two different ways here. I'm going to show you that once we get to this next level. Um, hold Monster is pretty effective. I think that this is a really great spell to have. But if you want, you can take Fireball, since we didn't take that yet. Um, and you can save your level 5 spells for Cone of Cold. So this can set up water with fire damage. It's not a bad thing to have. And... Uh, Sleet Storm is another one that we can go with that will create Ice Surface, and then you can have someone else cast Fireball on it. We do get another Meta Magic, so um, I think Subtle Spell, while you are silenced, you can cast a spell. is pretty useful later on in the game. And uh, yeah, Double this Duration of Conditions, Summons, and Surfaces is also another good one. It uses um, one Sorcery Point per spell, which is not bad. But uh, yeah, it doesn't matter as much. As long as we get Quickened and Twinned, we're good. So that's level 10 for Sorcerer, and then we're going to add in the Wizard now. So getting into the Wizard side of things, a couple more cantrips, <laughs> we'll have cantrips for days, Light, Acid Splash, Poison Damage is resisted too much, oh, we could go with that, 
Um, doesn't really matter at this point. We're not using these too often anyways. For our spells from the Sorcerer, we can go with Find Familiar is just a great one to have. Grease can be okay too. Chromatic Orb since we didn't take it earlier. Uh, Witch Bolt can be upcast. Some people don't like Witch Bolt, but for the purposes of this build, water damage. And then this is just an additional 1d12 every, every time we upscale it. So pretty good. But we want Shield. We didn't take Shield earlier, but Shield's really great to have for reducing damage that you'll be taking. And then uh, Thunder Wave to push back is pretty good. And we can prepare five of these spells. So we're just going to leave it like that for now. We can uh, switch this out once we pick what we're going to do for our final level. So you can choose one of the classes here, the subclass of the wizard. Or there's two options. Having a subclass or going back to sorcerer and getting fly, which is using your movement speed to fly around. Huge. And then we get chain lightning, which I think is the preferred method of going about it. Level 2 Wizard does give you, like, the option to choose, like, Necromancy or Conjuration, which gives us Create Water, which is kind of nice to have. But I do, for the purpose of that build, Creating Water is super powerful. But I do think that it's best to go with the Sorcerer to get Fly, because that's super effective. You're not going to slip on ice. Chain Lightning. This is a 10d8 of Lightning damage, so you can, <laughs> if you hit this with uh, Water, it does 160 damage at max. Pretty powerful. And it spreads to other people. This is by far the most damaging spell option that you can get in this game. Globe of Invulnerability is nice too, but this doesn't cast off of our Charisma modifier. So we can use this as a wizard, which has a little bit lower with 18 intelligence. Circle of Death is nice too because it explodes and hits enemies, but that's more so for a Necromancer build. So I think that getting Fly alongside Chain Lightning is best. That was cool. <laughs> so... In terms of our gear, uh, Marco Heschker is a really good sp staff because this gives you Kareska's Favor, which when you cast this, it gives you um, the ability to deal um, additional damage, and you can change your, your type here. So this will give you lots of different options to uh, increase your damage resistance. And it does use a reaction there, but as you can see, we do get a lot of extra spells. We get Ice Storm here from using that. And then we also get Cone of Cold, so two more attacks just for free, and they don't use a spell slot, which is really nice, uh, just from this staff. So this staff is pretty powerful. We want to use this. <laughs> and then on top of all that, you get Arcane Battery, so you can uh, use a free level 6 spell, so you can do Chain Lightning with Arcane Battery, and then use your Quicken spell, and after that, you can Chain Lightning again. <laughs> so this build gets absolutely freaky. You can also then cast Ice Storm. If you have someone to set up water, like a Mage Hand, or you can even just create water before battle starts, and it won't aggro people. And then you can literally just start off with Chain Lightning, which has the potential of doing 160 damage. And then you can also do it again. And then you can also um, use as a bonus action Ice Storm or Cone of Cold here, which is just absolutely broken. It's quite a damaging build. If you got Haste, applied as well you can cast another spell this thing gets absolutely nutty we also have 23 armor class which is pretty crazy uh, and alongside that we also have 21 charisma which would be 22 if we use the hag's hair and then 24 if we used the mirror and act three from the birthright which gives us plus two to charisma uh, cloak of protection which gives us one plus one armor class viconia's priestess robe which gives us this isn't the best option, like there are some much better, like if you want to, you go Helldusk Armor, 26 armor class, broken. Um, and then the Gloves of Dexterity and Evasive Shoes for plus one armor class. And then Iron Banded Shield for plus three armor class. Uh, and you also have 133 health, which is much more than anyone else on the team. This gets pretty broken. So there it is. That is a Sorcerer Wizard build guide for Baldur's Gate 3. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video useful, please hit the subscribe button below, and I'll see you all in the next video.